How do? As promised, HMP Forest Bank. I used to work there. Keith lived there only four months ago. 11 months he did in there. We're going to do as much of a tour as we can. A little bit of a walk and talk and tell a few stories. Hopefully you'll get an idea what the place is like and the atmosphere. So here, this is Agecroft Road this. And here we've got Keith. HMP Forest Bank. You look like you're looking for business, mate. <laughs> what are you selling? I'll, I'll give you 10 pence and a Mars bar. No, I don't do Mars Snickers. All right, so Keith, why is Forest Bank a dangerous place? Obviously, wait for it, wait for it, wait for your cue. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, young staff, inexperienced staff, not many staff, yeah? But let's talk about Spice. Okay, so, before that, Sam, you said about staff, yeah? All these problems that are happening in prisons now is because there's no staff, and the sooner they get government get a grip of this, the better, because if it kicks off on a wing and you've got two 18, 19 year old kids... Hang on a minute, you... stole that a minute, let me get the mic and hand you the mic. Keep talking. Yeah, if you've got two 18-year-old girls and it kicks off on a wing, what do you expect them girls to do? Yeah, and how can you control anything that's going on on the wing? So you talk about spice, the spice is rife. It's rife in every jail, but this jail, I think this is where it's seen Just, the Just, right, there is people who don't understand drugs and okay. won't know what spice is. Okay. Yeah? Yeah, so synthetic cannabis. Yep. Um, I believe it was a fish tranquilizer that you could buy in the shops at sort of one point. Yep. It looks like um, skunk weed, yep. but it isn't skunk weed. But you can spray it on stuff now, can't you? Right, so you can spray it on paper. So people are getting it in depositions. Hold the mic up yep. to your mouth. People are getting it in depositions. So your court papers, your statements, you know, anything that's come from court, your solicitor, you might get four or five hundred pages. Just, just explain what your depths are. Legal documents, legal prison documents. officers cannot search, can they? No, no. Rule 39. The Rule 39, um, they might ask you to open if they can open it in front of you, but even then, it's paper, so they're not going to see anything. No. Um, now, you have ID cards, um, which are, what, about three inches long, two and a half inches? Not that, mate. Maybe no. two, two and a half inches long, be an inch and a half. Right, so you've got ID cards. If you put that ID card on one piece of paper, on an A-field piece of paper, and you cut round it, you have an ID card worth of paper. That is 50 quid in prison. Now, you Spice, imagine, yeah. how do you take that drug? So you just put it in, a, you put it in a, like a pipe. So they make pipes um, out of whatever they can. Uh, inhalers for asthma. You put foil in that, you can smoke it through that. You can smoke it in a roll-up if you've got tobacco. You just make strips of paper off it, put it in the roll-up and you smoke it that way. The, so you probably made about, make about, I'd say about a grand, yeah, off, off an A4, maybe a little bit less. But if you've got four or 500 sheets of that and then someone else is selling it, then you're gonna get wars then because you're stepping on someone's toes there's a lot of money involved. Walk this way behind me. So, Gonna make a grand out of a piece of A4. Yeah. How much money are people making in that place? Tens and tens of thousands. Easy. Again, people don't understand. So let's just say you're a spy said, yeah? Mm -hmm. How do you pay for it? You've got no money in prison. Sam, I have seen people sell everything they own, clothes, stereo, trainers, give all the canteen away. Then they can't pay for it. And then what the dealer will do, then he'll pay someone a card of spice to go cut that lad. Oh, to go and hurt that lad. And people will do that? And people will do that, no problem. For that spice, it's, it's more addictive than crack. How do you stop it, Keith? Oh, how do you Can stop you it? stop it? I don't believe you, you're ever going to stop it. And, and Well, you're not going to do anything until you start upping the staff, the staff levels. Right, for me, the reason drugs are so rife, prevalent, and people are using them now, is boredom. Yeah? We've gone from what, uh, up to about eight years ago, yeah? We had a regime, strange ways we had a regime, prisons yeah. would be out every day, yeah. to pretty much a lot of prisons, 23 hour bang up and more. Was that a fate at night, Some, up to one point? Yeah, it used to be at Forest Bank here. 
eight o'clock. You stop them at seven in the morning. They'd be out at dinner. So listen, listen to this. They'd be out in the morning. Uh, they'd be out over dinner. You didn't lock them up. And you'd be locking them up eight o'clock at night. They were out pretty much all day. Private well, prisons. The time you got in. Well, private prisons used to get paid for going the extra mile, as it were. Time you know, out time out of cell. That's what they got paid for. So, you know, how do you stop the spice? You're not going to stop it, are you? No. No, you're not. And, and you know what, Sam? Whatever drug you're taking in prison, a lot of it is boredom, but the other thing is blocking it out. They're blocking everything out, whether they're thinking about the families, the sentence, what they've lost, what they're going to lose, you know, or childhood issues, whatever it may be, Sam, they're trying to block something out. I've just got to say this. My nan used to say, if you can't fight, that's fight, wear a daft hat. <laughs> <laughs> Carry on. Yeah, You're so, going to block it out? Yeah, you, whatever you're blocking out, Sam, psychological, whatever it is, yeah? And that's why most people take drugs. I've done it myself. I've a lot of myself. damaged people in prison, isn't it, Keith? Yeah, there is a lot of damaged people in prison, yeah. There's a lot of people in prison that shouldn't be in prison, that should be in mental institutions and getting real help. Agreed. And it's cheaper to keep them here. Yep. What, what do you think about private prisons making a profit? No, I don't like private prisons full stop, me, Sam. I just, they just, I've been in two. I've been in Oak Course, I've been in this one, and you, I don't feel safe in any of them. But what do you think about making a profit? See, for me... Well, that's what prison well, is now, it's for, a business. For me, you need more staff in prisons. Yeah. Yeah, so you know what? You take your profit, yeah. you put more staff in prisons. Yeah. Spend money on equipment, you give them more body cams. Yeah. I didn't used to believe in body cams, I do now. You know, no, you need them. dangerous times, body cam now, I think will make people think twice, most people. 99% of prisoners are going to think about what they're doing. You're always going to get that percentage that... Just kick off in the moment and they're going to assault someone, aren't they? Yeah, do you know, you know, you were saying about time out of cell, what you used to get in strange ways and whatnot. I mean, I remember when they used to have brick laying, they used to have plumber's course, they used to, you know, they used to have... Plastering. Port, they used to have everything, yeah, where you could, you could actually learn a trade before you left prison, so you were doing meaningful activities. Even when you're out yourself now, you're not doing meaningful activities. You might have a game of pool, you know, and then you have your dinner. Purposeful, I, mean, I call it, mate. Yeah. Purposeful activity, That's, there is none. Yeah. No, exactly, and, and, you know, I think that's a big thing. Come back with that, come back with that, put some money in, give some staff, open some, some workshops, proper workshops, where people are gaining something from it, not just going screwing, screws in plugs like they are doing in the night. Listen, let, let me tell you now, mate, so the two best workshops at Strange Ways, best attended, attendance records, okay. where you could learn a skill, were um, plastering shop and bricky shop, yeah? Yeah. They both got shut. They both got shut, them two shops, for office space. Yeah? So we got rid of the two shops where people could learn a skill, bricky, plastering, you can go out and, I don't know, what can you earn, Keith? A lot of money, grand a week. Yeah, he's a, he's a... Yeah? And like I said, it were well attended. Lads loved them. They got rid of them for office space. People are not bothered about purposeful activity in prison. No. You know, lads just used to be happy to out of cell. A bit of association, that's all they want. Yeah? It's just containment now. Because it is, you don't rehabilitate anyone. I, I've said that, got into numerous, well, discussions, shall we say, with people. There is no rehabilitation. Yeah, people can change, absolutely can change, and do change. Yeah? Life changing. Uh, they have a bad experience in prison. Keith, new thought process when he met me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it, just a little thing. Kids, kids come along, missus, that's it. If you're going again, we're done. That sort of thing, yeah? But there's no purposeful activity. And now, this bang up, we're going back to the 70s and 80s, brutality, yeah. people getting smashed all over, uh, bad assaults, serious assaults, lasses are getting assaulted as well. Yeah. Just gonna cross out roads, so we get a view at prison. We that's can't really go much further. I told you, Sam, that- uh, Older Mike, dude. The, I, think, I think she was, I think she was Romanian. Uh, so started on our wing. There we go. Um, and within a week, someone had threw a bucket with piss and bleach in her face. What? Yeah, that was within a week. Piss and bleach? Look, she came into the, onto the wing, right, and she was barking, screaming, shouting orders. She was talking down to people, not the way to How do it. How old was she? Probably in uh, mid-30s. But I think that's the way she was told to be, and she's coming to the wings and started being like that. Well, you know yourself, Sam. You, 
you can't be like that on the wings. No. You know? So right, you've got staff car park there, guys. You've got the main wall. At the far end is the main gate. Right, let's go this way. Let's, what we're gonna talk about. So, there's somebody in that prison, works in that prison, I know really well. Uh, you know what I'm talking about, don't you, yeah. Keith? Yeah. I've always told you, you guys, yeah? Treat and speak to people. I want to be spoke to and treat yourself, that's what I did. Seen lots of lads on the out when I lived in Little Oakland. I'm gonna do a little vlog in Little Oakland. I lived there five years. Every single day, I come out of my masonette yeah, I saw somebody. Yeah, lads that used to know. They knew where I lived, which was my car, which was my garage, where my motorbike lived. No mither, I never had no mither, no bother at all. Let's cross all this way, Keith. So, you were saying, Keith, I mentioned a name. We're not gonna, yeah. we're not gonna mention his name. No. So, is it is in enough trouble for me because lads used to turn up at strange ways when I were there, telling me about the things he'd get up to. So, yeah. He fancies himself as a bit of a lad. Mm -hmm. And, well, you, you tell me, Keith, sort of stuff that he gets well, up a to. A big fella, a big fella, you know, hands like shovels. Um, don't really work the wings. I'm not saying where he works, but he don't really work the wings. But when the officers have got trouble on the wings, or someone's refusing to go behind the door or whatever, for whatever reason, he'll come on, get him in the cell, just give him a good idea. And I've witnessed that myself. Big hard lads, is he doing that too? Oh, no, he's yet, no. Yeah? No, no, he's not. Not doing it to big hard lads, yeah. One lad who I call a mate now, yeah, I'm gonna interview him. Last time he was in that place, he's on a wing, he's gone onto a wing, yeah, they were having him over the staff. He was polite as you like, said, you know, I've, I've got some trouble on here, which he really did have. He said, can you just please put me on a wing, polite as you like, he stood there, yeah, hang on, I'll get one at managers, yeah. This thing we're on about, come on, walked up, look, what's your problem, let's have a quick word. Got him in office, bent him over, kicked the fucking shit out of him. Yeah? He ended up bleeding out of his backside, smashed his face up, yeah? Big man, eh? Big man. They're the sort of people, one day, something's gonna happen and people are gonna say, you know, it's terrible, prison officer this, prison officer that. There are consequences. Most people, people I was in incidents with, people I have, Seeing odd, restrained, no problem. No problem at all, seeing him on the out, yeah? You get to know him, some lads, you get to know him. That's how you get to know him, your first contact, you know, you're fighting with them. Putting them in iron locks, taking them to segregation and the like. Bullies, you know, they usually get their own. Anyway, Keith. We're going into the shrubbery now, as it were. Come here, you've gone out of picture. I'm trying to do a, a fantastic, yeah, fantastic piece of film work. Oh, okay. We're going into shrubbery now. Yeah, I've got shorts on. Uh, there's lots of nettles and stuff like that, but I'm doing it for you guys. All right. Are you ready for this, Keith? I'm ready for it, yeah. Let's do it, big man. <laughs> Bigger man. <laughs> How do? How do? Another walk and talk. So we are at Forest Bank Prison. As promised, it's not raining. Bit of atmosphere. You can see the lights on the end of the wing. That's the non-swing there. Yeah, that's VPs, all sex offenders and paedophiles. Didn't used to have a wing, a sex offenders wing, Forest Bank. They built that on the games pitch. It went from approximately 1100. Let's have a look here. Main man, Keith. It went from approximately 1100 to holding about 1600. So, when VPs used to come in, before that wing that you've just seen was built, they used to tell them to get a story, and they used to go on the wings as VPs, undercover. And yeah, they did get found out, and a lot got battered. Keith, how we doing? I'm all right, mate. I'm all right. When was the last time you were in here? Been out about four months now. Four months? Spent about 13 and a half months in there. Is this first time you've ever been in there? Yeah. Is there anywhere you'd rather less be? I've done jails all over the country. I've done years and years in strange ways. But this place, no, mate. This this, this for me is, is somewhere that... I'd, well, I'd I, I've labelled it most dangerous prison. Yeah. It's got to be one of them. Yeah, I get yeah? that. I get that. A lot of dangerous prisons. We talked about Woodhill, me and you just now, haven't yeah. we? 
that's a dangerous place I assaults but this place here let's let's have another quick look this place here lots of assaults they don't get reported on staff as well on staff snitches get stitches people don't report things but it is a fucking dangerous place this let me tell you so we're gonna have a walk further around see whether they get a better view of the prison I'm gonna tell you a few stories Yeah, so I've just stopped because Keith, yeah, was sneaking through undergrowth. Not particularly sneaking. You can, you can come in here, you can bring your dogs. But he says, I feel like I'm on a graft. And this, this shrubbery you can see here, yeah, it was literally a foot high 20 years ago when I was here. So the prison then, you got a clear view of the prison. Obviously, this tree line's grown. Where you can see the pole, mid-picture, cameras uh, what whatever else is going on there yeah there is sort of a fence it's only like a bit of a fence it's not going to stop anyone from getting over then you've got about a 10 meter grass line till you come up to the main wall so moving on so there you go I can't get any further these bushes are thorny you can see just in front of me maybe six foot there is just a little wire fence. Then there's a, a bit of a road around the prison and a tree line before the wall. We're gonna go and get a better view now. Here we go, much better view now. Like I said, that's a non-swing there. You've got the road going around the prison. Got your lights, cameras, action. I'm thinking me, what we're looking at, that wing there is B-wing. Okay. Uh, B1 and B2, so that's two landings, B1, two landings, B2. The wings are separated by a floor and fire door, so it's classed as two separate wings, housing about 100 prisoners. That's where I started my career, with young offenders. 18 months on there, absolute chaos. Absolute chaos. It's quite spectacular looking like this, isn't it, mate? Yeah, makes a difference. Any thoughts? Nerves. I'm glad I'm not back there, mate. Glad you me too. I'm just wondering what people are going through there at the minute, mate. Well, it's not good, is it? We've got a few stories to tell, mate. We're gonna walk a bit further round and then we're gonna tell you some of the things Keith experienced. Although you can't see much, I'll give you a little bit of history about the prison. So it was opened in 99. The first governor, good lad, uh, he weren't happy about it being called Forest Bank. Forest Bank, Wank, Forest Gump, as it's known. You know, they're not good names, are they? They could have thought of something else. So, as a promise or sort of a selling point to the people of Salford, this way you're looking now, although we can't see, this park, yeah, it's a country park. They've made walkways, there is a river, they've put bridges over at river. There's a football pitch somewhere, changing rooms, uh, mountain bike type path, horse riding path. Uh, they planted thousands and thousands of trees. All the trees around the prison, you know, I, I said to Keith that there's all shrubbery now. Well, there will be. You know, it's nearly 20 years since I was here, so all this all this has grown over. Anyway, we're going to see with the conceit back end of prison. But yeah, initially it started, held about 1,100 people. The first two years they had one riot. Um. It started as a new prison. The new staff that went in there, basically, were in the prison six months before it opened, training. It opened, mostly brand new staff, some experience. Mike Goodwin was the first governor. He was a, what, what would you say, a stout fellow. Bit of a temper on him, but he was a good governor. I liked him, but he was one of them people that, you know, he weren't best friendly. And he would walk around this place because it was his prison, yeah, on his own, and he'd have a go at you. If you were on a wing and something weren't right, he would have a go. So I started about two years after it had been opened, yeah. There were a lot of good staff. They were the experienced staff two years in, and it was fantastic. My first 18 months working with young offenders was amazing. Great staff. Uh, lots of laughs, lots of incidents. Yeah, it were all going on. Sadly, I don't know them lads uh, are now dead. 
a lot are on the run. A lot I would like to see at Strange Ways on the Cate unit, you know, going from petty crime to armed robbery and the like. Sad state, really. Great. So, <laughs> we're like meandering through the undergrowth. We've come here, we're going to tell a story. So, I'm thinking here that's A Wing, quite possibly. Yeah. So, what you've got at this end of the prison, you've got the house blocks. Used to be A1 and 2 through to F1 and F2. Keith informed me they now got G and H. What's the non swing called? Do you know? No? Um, no, it's down bottom end. Okay, so this, this place has recently been at news. Uh, a week ago today, Sunday, a lad got slashed. Uh, they're talking about gang wars. I said race wars. And that's what it is, isn't it, Keith? Yeah. It's different areas. Yeah. Like I've said, Post Cold, Oldham, Rochdale, lads from ethnic backgrounds, and then you've got Bolton, Wigan, Salford. Salford and the like and it, it's like race wars in there um, a lot of bad assaults you've seen one didn't you yeah your mate yeah got slashed yeah through the side of his door how did that happen um, so one lad walks up to his door you have spy flaps he's opened it uh, whispered something knowing my mate couldn't hear him my mate said to him I can't hear you mate so the lad said yeah I'll go to the side of your door you have a gap of a half inch going round round your door so he's put his ear to that from the inside of the cell and the lad on the outside of the cell has got a ruler with a blade melted into it and gone straight down the side of his face. Okay. Through his ear into his neck. Okay now. And um, what did your mate do to deserve that, if anything? <sighs> Probably stick up for himself. Because it's, it's you know, you, you can only want do one or two things in there. You know, the runner, you fight, because there's that many of them. And they all stick together. That's that's one thing they'll give them, they all stick together. So you you, you, you don't just fight one. And it's going off all the time. Every day. How, every day. how much time out of cell did you get? Um, right, so you got an hour, no, probably two hours in the morning, and then you got out at about five o'clock till six o'clock for your tea, and then back behind your door then. But you can go to work as well if you want. And when's it going off? All the time? All, all the time. It's going off in work, it's going off on the walkway. Um, what do they call that now? Not, it's not the M1. What, Oh, the, the walkway from yeah. the prison to the, the workshops. Yeah. Well, it's part of M1. M1's extension in it. All we're yeah. talking about there is a concrete walkway. Yeah. And as you walk up that, you've got your workshops on the right. Yeah. You've got your kitchens. You've got your reception. Uh, on the left, you've got chapel, healthcare, gym. People going to visits. People going. To yeah, doctors. people walk down that M1 to go to visits. Not a lot of staff on that M1. Do they still have an officer on the gate at the end? No, no, no officers on the gates. So if you don't keep separate from somebody, so yeah. if you've got beef with somebody, you're on a different wing, you're on a keep separate, it's on your security file. If you're walking on that walkway, you don't know if that person or them people are going on that walkway. And that's probably... That's probably is is like the staff on that walkway? No, no, no. Let, let me tell you now, this is how it used to be. At Strange Ways and a lot of other prisons, remember Strange Ways, high security estate, you can only move eight prisoners at once. And with a radio, you used to have to get permission. Yeah, some movement in Forest Bank is with a radio. However, movement to work and that, you let everyone off the wings. Free flow. So you used to have 12 wings, people coming off, you know, maybe 300 going to work, short distance, 50, 60 metres to workshops, and that's where it used to go off. Yeah. You know, it's literally backs to the wall, but there's no walls, is there, Keith? No. Going off on the wings... Got off in the doctors when I was there. Dangerous place then, mate. Yeah. yeah. So you're, you're not affiliated, you were on your own. Yeah. Are, are you still watching your back all the time? Uh, out here? Yeah. Um, no, not, not out here. I'm not, not so much out here, Sam. Um, in there, definitely. Bad? Yeah. Yeah, when I go to prison, that's, yeah. Right, guys, we're going to move further on. Right, so... We're walking back out at shrubbery now. We're going to have a look at the car park into the prison and the front elevation. So this shrub we've just been crawling through like a pair of wrongans. <laughs> <coughs> I was telling Keith, as an officer, security manager asked me to come and do a perimeter check. So you've seen the road. The road weren't there. <coughs> Excuse me, it was just grass. And these shrubs, they weren't as big. 
but they seen someone, so they sent me with two lads. I told Keith, one was uh, Johnny Concrete, hard as fuck. Yeah, and the other one was, uh, I'm not gonna knock him, he was an all right lad, but he got no bottle. But, having said that, people like that, <coughs> excuse me, you can work with them. I'm gonna have to do that again, excuse me. <coughs> Sorry about that. So, we goes out, the three of us, Johnny Concrete, the other lad and me, and we're walking the perimeter, close to the wall. So I sees a lad. <coughs> I sees a lad. So we've got a radio. Now, I said to the security manager, what's radio for, like, protection? They're going to send troops if we get in bother, having a bit of a laugh. He just laughed. Can't really get a signal. Anyway, there's a lad. So the lad who, no bottle, he said, I'm going. So where are you going? Back to prison. Still got this tickle in my throat, excuse me. <clears throat> Johnny Concrete says, I'm going with him. He says, just hang on, I'm gonna have a word with this lad. <coughs> excuse me. I'm gonna have a word with him. Anyway, they, they're both going, so I walk, so. Oh my Lord. <coughs> Back in a minute. Swallowed some creature. It's gone, thankfully. So I said I'm gonna have a word with him. So this lad's there. He's got a balaclava on. <laughs> so I said, all right, lad, are we on a mission? He says, yes, gov. We are. I told, I told Keith earlier this story and we were both laughing. I've got a feeling this lad knew I were, knew me, as it were. Anyway, it was a friendly conversation. I, I says, a mission, parcel, he says, yeah. I says, are you on your own? <laughs> he says, no, gov. I says, how many of you is there? He says, five. I says, have you all got ballys on? He says, no, that's why they're still in bushes. <laughs> he says, anyway, gov, what are you going to do? I says, what am I going to do? I says, I don't know. I'll try my radio, shall I? And I did. And it was like... <coughs> anyway, I said, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to have a walk back round to the prison. Obviously, tell security manager who will probably fall police. I says, uh, so you have probably completed your mission and got off in there. He says, right, see you later, gov. See you later, kid. And I went back to the prison. Very surreal. And that's how things happen. I also told Keith a story. Like I said, when I was at Strange Ways, did you keep that light on me? Yeah, go on. This is about me, not you. <laughs> Fucking get on with it. <laughs> when I was at Strange Way, I used to move eight prisoners with radio. So one night, a cops were at library run. Horrible job, hated it. So you go on the wings and you might end up with, I don't know, somewhere between 20 and 30 lads on your own. This particular night, there were no radios or no batteries, so I didn't have one. I'd say it's a good two minutes walk to the library. They had a lively, library. <laughs> <laughs> it is late at night and I've just been eating mosquitoes. They had a library orderly, he'd book the books in and out. So I've got these lads up there and it became very tense very quick. Two lads were gonna be having a go, a bit of a fight. So the orderly actually, I'll tell you who is after Keith, his, his name's gonna come, okay. was a proper hard bastard. Um, and I mean an old bastard, well known for being hard. In the prison, he was a good lad. Um, he was a library orderly, education orderly, gym orderly. What's that tell you about him, Keith? Yeah, good model man. prisoner, yeah, model, model prisoner. prisoner yeah. Enhanced. He's the only prisoner that ever went out of that. It's a Cat B prison to college. They used to let him out and he'd go to college. It doesn't happen from Cat B's. Uh, release on temporary license, whatever it were. And, and and he he's looking and he just give me a nod and if I'd have got in trouble that lad helped me, I know he would. And he weren't a screwboy or anything like that. You know, just one of them. Uh sadly, he when he got out of prison, he's the one we all put his money on, he was gonna make it, he was gonna turn his life around. He went back to his old ways and he shot someone and his life off. Uh, I think he got thirty odd years. Anyway, these two lads are going to have a go. So I've got no radio, there is an alarm bell. So, you know, <laughs> in my loudish Yorkshire action, I said, right, pack it in, lads. So 
So they're looking at me, what, what are you going to fucking do about it, all that sort of stuff. So I stood back, I said, I'm not going to do out, lads, obviously, I'm on my own. You've got all these lads watching. I'm going to watch the fight with these lads. Press alarm bell, two minutes, troops will arrive. So you've got two minutes to knock fuck out of each other. <laughs> so quite often prisoners don't want to fight, so they're looking at each other, looking at me, looking at other lads. Uh, one of them started smirking, I'm smirking. We all started laughing and it, it turned into nothing. However, that, that could have been serious, that. Diffused it. You know, if, if it had a kicked off. But I, I don't know what I'd have done. Well, I would have hit the alarm bell. Um, probably looking at the lads who were there, I might well have tried to split it up. That's what you do. You either do that or you're back well away. Me, always used to get stuck in. Not because I'm tough or hard. You know, just trying to break things up and that, stop people fighting. But it's one of them things. Uh, and incidents like that happen all the time. Let's have a look. How are we doing? I'm all right. Have you got some stories to tell? About this place? Yeah. Well, I didn't have a good time in there. No, you didn't? No, I didn't have a good Listen, time. Listen, was it scary? Um, yeah. A lot of people message me, right, they've got family going into prison. Yeah. And I always tell them, keep your head down, don't borrow anything, is the best thing I can do. Mm. Well, I told you about Joanne going into the prison. Yeah. As a visitor. So this is this is Keith's message. Just just say as a visitor. Yeah. So a visitor. Um, she's not used to this life. Not used to criminality, anything like this. She's visiting me in prison. Childhood sweetheart. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, she comes in 15 minutes late one day, and only told me tonight when she knew I was coming doing this with uh, Sam that the reason she was late is because there were two young girls, officers, doing the visits. <laughs> and they wouldn't let anybody in because they'd ordered McDonald's. The week before that, an old lady in front of Joanne going through, same two young girls, uh, old ladies asked how long, how long how long's the visit? And um, she said, it's gonna be an hour. Old lady walked off, Joanne's next to be seen and they start mocking the old lady, mimicking what she'd just asked them. Now this is young young kids, you know, with no life experience running prisons. Do and you know? Do you know? Right, so POA and others now, they're looking to make minimum age 21. That's still young, isn't it? That's still very young. But it's better than 18. Yeah. So when we talk about young girls in prison, they are young, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. Um, any idea the ratio? You know, did you have one lad, one lass every day? Or well, on our wing, it was, it was mainly female staff. They're not... They weren't all young, but the majority of them was, but it was mainly uh, female staff on my wing. Sad state of affairs. Mm. Just let me get camera straight. So, we've just done walk and talk around Forest Bank. If you enjoy it, we'll come back. I've got loads of stories and so's Keith. Mm. Uh, and we'll do a part two. However, we've just been talking now about staffing levels. Yeah. Um... Prisoners having a right to vote, so Keith said basically... Well, you, you say what you said. So a few years ago when Cameron was Prime Minister, there was a big thing about human rights and us having uh, the right to vote, and Cameron said, uh, prisoners having right to vote, it makes me sick to my stomach, just the thought of it. They were, I quote, they were his exact words. Can you stop rocking car? Because... Yeah, sorry. What he doesn't understand, though, is if prisoners had the right to vote and, and they had politicians coming into prisons... Yeah. Nearly every prisoner would ask for more staff, for safety for staff and safety for cons. You know, we don't want the right, the right to vote just for the sake of it. That's Time what, out of selling it, that's all you want, innit, mate? Yeah. And how many people are in prison, Sam? 80, 89, 90,000. 90,000. Nine, just, just to remind you, 90,000. Yeah, we, we are building new prisons. Uh, biggest prison population, lowest number of staff. There was about 34,000 in when I left in 2015. There or there about something like that. There's about 22 now, so they've lost a third at staff. Yeah, some prick somewhere decided workforce modernisation and benchmarking. They were the buzzwords 212 to 215. The whole of the English and Welsh prison system that they didn't. They got too many staff. They, they had too many staff. Yeah, absolute fucking chaos. And it just got worse and worse. They knocked the wages right down. Mm. Yeah, now the wages are going back up to what they were. They don't realise. They've gone that far now. There's that few staff, least experience, and here's the thing again. We're going to have it from the horse's mouth, as it were, talking about female staff. We've mm. talked about females in there, young lasses, and lots of them. So you can remember when female staff come into the prison service. Yeah, I do. Um, so 1989, 
I first came away um, in the prison or the boxing ring as it was known then um, and there was no I, I, there was no female members of staff at first and then they started integrating them and they were known as matrons they had big long navy blue skirts on um, but the men the, 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 the male officers they didn't like it at all at first. It took a while for them to get used to it because they believed that it wasn't a place for a woman. And you're seeing it now, the amount of assaults right. that are happening to female members right. of staff. Right, listen, listen, let's get this straight. And I'll always say this, my top 10 officers, which would take me a bit of time to pick, five of them will be lasses, no question. Yeah, I get that. I worked with a young lass in there, Lisa, 21 she was, lesbian. Salt of the earth, she could handle her own, she got good interpersonal skills, she was tiny jockey weight. I'd work with that ass all day in you know, on, on the worst wings, definitely. I think back but, then it was a different attitude when it's um yeah, cause, early 80s. yeah, but here's the thing. Yeah, it's now I don't know, fifty percent or more, some prisons, female staff, young female staff. In male jails, you need males, don't you? Yeah. They're not there's there's, there's no female officer. I've ever met who I would willingly take into battle with me. What I mean by that is, I don't mean that they won't support you, not at all. I, I don't mean that none of them have got any bottle, not at all. I mean, you know, push comes to shove. I don't want to last there. I don't want us to get hurt. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to be worrying about that. Plenty, plenty of lads I won't be taking into battle with me as well. No lasses. There's no incident I've ever been involved in. No restraint incident. No planned removal where you get kitted up ever where there's a female member of staff. And I wouldn't want one either. I wouldn't want one. You can't always pick who you're going into them situations with. But I wouldn't want one there. Colin, some cracking officers, but it's too many now. It begs belief, doesn't it, how you can have 100 men on a wing with all them different personalities and characters in for all them different crimes and you can put two 19 year old girls on there to run it and unlock them all beggars belief it does i tell you now my daughter won't be going into that job not a chance neither would mine anyway like i say hope you've enjoyed the video if you have let me know in the comments if you'd like a part two we got loads of stories we might even go to one or two other prisons visit them hey bit mm. of a walk and talk yeah i've been in enough so thanks to Keith again. Thanks to your good selves. The support as a community, amazing comments, support for guests. Parting shot. God bless, guys. God bless. I'll see there. Or we'll see there. We'll see there. We'll see there.